There's a bug that's often overlooked. For example, if you pick up an item from one storage, hold onto it, then close that storage and move to another storage, you can deposit the item there. We'll now address and fix this issue. Let's get started. We will now implement two mechanisms to address the bug, starting with one in the VPC underscore inventory component to enforce a server side check regardless of client actions. Begin by adding a new function called as in transfer range, setting its access specifier to private and marking it as pure. Add an input parameter named to inventory component of type BPC underscore inventory object reference. An output parameter named return value of type boolean. Next, create some space between the function node and the return node. Drag the to inventory component input pin and search for a get owner node. From this node, add a get actor location node to retrieve the actor's location. Now, copy these two nodes and paste them below. For the newly copied get owner node on its target pin, grab it and search for get a reference to self. This self reference is used to calculate the distance between the originating inventory and the target inventory, such as a storage box, and validate whether the transfer is in range and allowed. Then, from the get actor location node associated with the to inventory component, add a distance vector node. Connect the output from the self references get actor location node to the v2 input of the distance node. Next, connect the output from the distance node to a less equal node and promote the second pin of this less equal node to a variable named max transfer item distance. Connect the return value of the equal less node to the return value pin of the return node. Finally, compile and save the blueprint. Then set the default value of max transfer item distance to 250. This value defines the maximum allowable distance for item transfers, ensuring that items can only be moved when the inventories are within a valid range. Before continuing, for better organization, select the as in transfer range function again and move it to the transfer category. Now open the transfer item function, where we need to use our new function exactly at the point where we validate the target inventory. Rearrange the existing is valid nodes slightly upward, then drag the new is in transfer range function into the graph. Move the to inventory component variable to the left and connect it to the input pin of the is in transfer range node. This step ensures that we validate not only the target inventory but also its range on the server side. Next, add another pin to the in node to incorporate this range check neatly. For better organization, Hold down the control key and nudge the two pins downward slightly. Then connect the return value from the is in transfer range node to the new free pin on the in node. Compile and save the blueprint and then start play mode. During testing, use the T key to grant yourself items and head over to the box. Transfer some stones and a hammer from your inventory to the box. Next, pick up the stones, close the inventory, and move to a chest that's more than 250 units away. Open this chest and try to deposit the stones. It won't work because the server side range check prevents the transfer when the distance is too great. The items remain in the box as expected. Now, pick up the stones again and move to the nearest chest, roughly 150 units away, where the deposit succeeds because the server validates that the inventories are within the allowable distance. Now, we want to prevent such item transfers from occurring. To address this, we'll intervene on the client side and modify the widgets accordingly. Close BPC inventory because all changes are done. Navigate to UI, widgets, inventory and open BP inventory drag and drop blueprint. In this blueprint, create a new custom event called cancel drag operation. This event will be called when we close the inventory or storage, so connect its execution pin to call the cancel drag drop node. Compile and save. Next, open WB item slot, the child class of our item slot master, and switch to its graph. Add a new event dispatcher named start drag operation. Add an input to this dispatcher called drag operation of type BP inventory drag and drop object reference.
Then, open the undrag detected function and, at the end before the return node, grab the execution pin from the node that creates the drag operation. Search for an add call start drag operation, which is our newly created event dispatcher, and connect the return value pin from the created drag operation to the drag operation input on the dispatcher. For better organization, add two reroute nodes to the connection from the return node. This setup ensures that whenever a drag operation starts, the dispatcher is triggered with the corresponding drag operation. Finally, navigate to the event graph and add the event destruct event. Drag the event dispatcher into the graph and select unbind all, ensuring that all bindings are cleared when the widget is destroyed. Compile and save the blueprint. Return to the map view and open the WB slots container widget, then switch to the graph view. Here, additional modifications are required within the refresh slots event, so we'll rearrange some nodes for better clarity. Maybe because I like to do it. I think it has a calming effect. Or annoying. Okay, back to work. First, retrieve the slot widget's variable into the graph and use a for each loop on it. Connect the completed execution pin of the item slots for each loop to the execution pin of the new for each loop node. Next, from the array element pin, search for an add the bind event to start drag operation node, which corresponds to the event dispatcher from the item slot widget. Bind this event by adding a new custom event and name it start drag operation underscore event. Then, drag the drag operation pin from this assigned event and promote it to a variable. Naming it active drag operation. This configuration ensures that whenever a drag operation is initiated, the corresponding drag operation is captured and stored enabling us to properly track and manage the active drag operation during interactions. Next, search for the event destruct node and add it to the graph. Then, drag the active drag operation variable into the graph as a get node. Right-click on this node and choose convert to validated get so that we safely retrieve the variable's value before proceeding. Connect the execution pin from the event destruct node to the validated get node. Next, from the active drag operation output of the validated get, grab the isValid execution pin and search for the cancel drag operation node. This is the event we previously created in the BP inventory drag and drop blueprint. Finally, drag the active drag operation variable into the graph again and connect it to the cancel drag operation node. This will automatically set reset the variable. Mark this section by selecting the event destruct node, pressing the C key and adding a comment labeled, cancel drag and drop operation. Compile and save everything and we are ready to try it out. Press play mode and use the T key to give yourself some items. Open the inventory and rearrange a few items to verify that everything functions correctly. Next, grab an item and close the inventory simultaneously. You'll notice that the drag operation is automatically canceled. Then, move to the box to conduct further tests by transferring items into it. For instance, when you grab the pumpkin and close the storage, the drag operation cancels as expected, leaving the pumpkin in the same position when you reopen the box. We also tested moving items with the hotbar, and everything works flawlessly. With this, we have successfully resolved the bug. Please leave a like or subscribe. If you encounter any additional bugs or have suggestions, feel free to let me know in the comments or via Discord. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.